What's up YouTube? In today's video, we are going to be setting up auto water change on the CoralView Hydros using the contents of everything that you see right here. So what's up YouTube? In today's video, we are going to be setting up and configuring auto water change. To do this, I'm going to be using a Hydros Control X3. I already did a video on how to onboard and set up and add that device into my collective. And in case you haven't had the opportunity to see that, I will link the video up here or wherever YouTube decides to put it. So, as of now, we have already got the Control X3 mounted and ready. Nothing on it has been configured yet. So the remaining items I'm going to need to get this up and running are going to be two Kimura dosing pumps. I've also already 3D printed a stand that I'm going to use to mount and set these dosing pumps on. We are going to have to run some tubing and we also have to install one more water level sensor as well. Alright, so reading the documentation on how the auto water change works, it's going to work very similar to the way I do it with my GHL. So on my GHL Maxi, my Proflux for my water change with that. I have a high and low level sensor that sits in the return section of my sump on my water box. So I have a Maxi dedicated for this. This one pulls out the old water. Once this triggers the low level sensor, then it'll stop running this dose head and then this dose head will fire up and it'll start putting water back in to refill the system. I also run an ATO off a dosing pump on this setup as well. The ATO is also combined with the high level sensor for the auto water change. So this becomes disabled when this operation kicks on. And then once this is complete, this gets re-enabled. So Reading how CoralView is doing this with the Hydros, this is going to work in a very similar fashion. So I'm going to work on getting the lines ran, getting my shelf mounted, and then when my lines are ran, I will be running one line into my saltwater reservoir here, and then I will be running the drain line into a drain port that is back here. All right, so we got our lines ran. Our lines are connected to the pumps. Given the direction of these pumps, I did put these together using special 90 degree elbow connections that I purchased along with the tubing, so that way the lines wouldn't kink on me. From the pumps, the lines travel across there and then run down this way and behind the wall there down into the sump. So if we turn on for the new water and we come over here and visit where the lines are ran, we can see that the water is added into the aquarium. Now if we test the pump for the old water and we can see that the water is being successfully taken out of the aquarium as well. Now one thing to mention with using these pumps, I do not believe these pumps can be used in a forward and reverse cycle. So if you notice, I have the input switched. And a good way to test this on which direction that you need to put these lines is when you turn it on, you, if you put your finger on the outlet where you feel the air being pulled in, that's the direction of how you need to add the input into the pump. So, as we can see, this line for the new fresh water is being pulled in this way, and then it gets fed this way. Whereas the old water is set up in reverse, it's pulling the water in, and then it drains down through here. The next thing I need to do is I need to add a new sensor for my low water input. I don't need a high level sensor because I currently already run the Hydros ATO. Let's go ahead and get this 
part added and then we'll work on getting this configured in the hydrosap. work on getting uh, auto water change configured. So the first thing we are going to do is I need to add a new input for the low level sensor. So I'm going to scroll down the inputs. I'm going to select the three dots. I'm going to add a new input. We're going to call this AWC-low. I'm going to say create. It wants to know what kind of input this is. We're going to say sense port. It says it wants to know what type of sense mode. I'm going to select optical water level. Notification none is visible. We'll leave it off and we'll select upload changes. Now I'm going to go back to the home and I'm going to find that new input we just added. So right now it's saying it is wet. So I'm going to raise this up really quick to make sure we see that it says dry. All right, it switched to dry. That is what I would expect. I just moved the sensor back to where it needs to be. So it says that it is now wet again. The next thing I need to do is I need to locate my ATO. And I'm going to need to delete my ATO because the auto water change is going to be part of uh, the ATO function. So I'm going to select add or edit input. Now when you get this box up, it wants to create an input automatically. So just tap onto the side and it'll disappear. I'm going to select my ATO which is currently located on my Frag Tank X2 drive port 1. I'm going to say delete. I'm going to say upload changes. Okay, let's begin configuring the automatic water change. I'm going to scroll down and select outputs. I'm going to say add new output. I'm going to call this 40 gallon AWC. So we're going to select create. It wants to know the type. I'm going to select automatic water change. It wants to know what the low level input is going to be. That low level input is going to be the sensor we just installed prior, which is AWC low. The leak input, I do run a rope sensor, but I'm going to leave this unused for now. For the high level input, I'm going to select the 40 gallon ATO sensor. It wants to know the ATO output device. That ATO output device is connected to my control X2 on drive port 1. I don't have anything connected to drive port 2, so we're going to select drive port 1. It wants to know the drain output device for the water change. I've got those connected to a Wi-Fi strip, so my drain output device is going to be connected to EB4-5 on port 3. So my fill output device is going to be EB4-5 on port 4 and then it wants to know ATO active in modes I don't want my ATO active in the water change we'll just say normal and do I want this to depend on anything I'm going to leave this blank for now and then I'm going to select enable drain settings just to see what we have in here these are going to be settings that I will probably play with later on depending on how long it takes the water change to drain and how long it takes to fill up I'll time that once I know how long it takes to drain I'm gonna come in here and add this as a fail safe so that way it doesn't drain too long and then I'm also going to calculate how long it takes for it to fill up and then I'll add this in here as well as a fail safe. For right now I'm going to leave those not selected and we'll say upload changes. All right, so to wrap this all up, we're gonna come down and select our hamburger menu. We're gonna select schedules. We're going to create a new schedule. I'm gonna call this 40 gallon AWC schedule. 
Once you know the type, we're going to select water change regimen. And for now, I'm going to do a water change just once a day. It wants to know the AWC start time, so I'm going to select 7 a.m. The way the schedule works is it wants to know how many times a day you want to change your water change. The more we change this, it will do water changes more often throughout the day. So I'm just leave this at one for now. But if you were to move this up to example and say, I want to do two water changes. And if you put an end time down here, like noon, between 7 a.m. and noon, that is five hours. It should start the second water change around 1030 for the second one and it'll complete that one and have it done by now. And then down here it says AWC run on days. I'm going to leave this selected for all five days for the time being and then we're going to select upload changes. All right, once the water change has been configured, that gives us a couple new outputs on the screen. We have the 40 gallon AWC ATO, which is currently off. We also have the 40 gallon AWC drain, and then we also get the 40 gallon AWC fill. Now I'm going to test to make sure the ATO is functioning just by raising the high level sensor up and the ATO is functioning as it should. When I put that back down, it ATO stops and then we've got a water change scheduled to kick off here in about 10 minutes so another thing I need to do is I need to turn these dosing pumps on because I, I was turning them on and off manually for testing so I'm just gonna set them to be about medium and we'll let this kick off here in about 10 minutes and we'll see how it works there we go the automatic water change has kicked off so currently we are removing the old water and if your goal is to know how much water you are changing i would recommend filling up a five gallon bucket like this and once the water change uh, completes we can go back and measure how much it did change using a cylinder of some sort like this and then we can go back and adjust our settings as needed to meet that goal of a 10% or 20% water change that you like to have on your system. And here is a view inside the sump. This is the drain line right back here. So my low level sensor located just a little bit above where my return pump uh, sits at from the top. So that way the water change can complete without impacting the operation of the return pump allowing the system to run during the water change. The old water has been pulled out. I've got everything down here in a bucket. The hydro has turned off the old pump for removing the water. And now we are adding water back into the system. And if we jump over here, we can see the water getting added back in. All right, the auto water change completed successfully. I also measured out how much the first water change uh, did. And the first water change did about 2,700 ml for the first change. So that is roughly about a thousand ml short from a gallon of water. So overall, I think this is successful. I will probably need to make a couple more tweaks to get to that percentage of where I'm changing out about a gallon a day. Or I can increase my frequency and do that twice a day and just change out a little bit more than a gallon a day if I want to do it that way as well. So I hope this video has been informative for you. If you have any questions or if you would like to reach out, I'm always available on Discord. The link to Discord will be available in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions or constructive criticism, please let me know in the comments below. It always helps me out. And if this video did help you out, please give it a like. Please subscribe. It definitely helps out this channel. All right, and until the next one, guys, I'm out. Peace.